Very few things are more basic to computer use than cutting, copying, and pasting. Yet, for many people, these basic tools in the computer user toolkit are as foreign as a visitor from Mars. Today, you'll learn what the cut, copy, and paste commands do and how to use them like an expert. And it will only take about 10 minutes to learn. So let's get started. You're watching a video from the Mom and Dad Technology Tutorial Series. I'm making this mad TNT video series for my mom who sometimes struggles with technology. Don't get mad and blow up trying to help someone close to you. Instead, just send them this video. Computers do amazing things, but sometimes the simple things are the best things. Copying data from one place to another is one of those simple things that computers do with amazing speed and accuracy. Unfortunately, unless someone has shown you how, you may have never learned to cut, copy, and paste data. That's okay, today you will learn how. Why would you even want to cut, copy, and paste? The benefits of learning this are enormous, and I don't say this flippantly. This is probably the most important and useful thing to learn for all computer users because you will use it every single day. If you've ever struggled to type passwords correctly or had to retype text or wanted to make copies of files but didn't know how, those are just a few things you can do with cut, copy, and paste commands. Almost every program you use allows you to cut, copy, and paste, and you can even use those commands to exchange data between different programs. What does it even mean to cut or copy data, and how are they different? Let's start with the copy command. When you copy something, you create a duplicate, leaving the original in place without altering or deleting the original. For example, if I copy myself, I can put this somewhere else, like over here. Now, there are two copies of me, scary, I know. If I cut myself, you can't see me until I paste myself back on the screen. Let's look at this in a program that is commonly associated with cutting and copying. Microsoft Word or any other word processor. If you want to copy a piece of data from a single letter to an entire document, you simply highlight the text you want to copy, then you choose the copy command. Then you move within your document to where you want to place the copied text and you paste it. That's easy for me to say and do because I'm a nerd, nerd sidekick to be specific, but let me show you how you can do this too. First, I'll highlight the text I want to copy. Next, I copy the text. You can do that four different ways. Like Microsoft Word, many programs will have a copy icon near the top of the program window. After you highlight your text, click the copy button. Second, you can highlight the text and right-click on your mouse. That means to click the right mouse button. That's the one here. You'll see a small pop-up menu near your mouse pointer. That gives you a contextual menu, showing you the commands you can apply to whatever you right-click on. The commands are in context with whatever you right-click. Click copy with either the right or left mouse button I would suggest that you use the left mouse button so you get in the habit of bringing up the contextual menu with the right mouse button, but selecting the action with the left mouse button. Since the left mouse button is the standard mouse button used for clicking something to trigger an action. Third, let's select the text again. Now this time, hold down the control key on your keyboard. That's the one that says CTRL. For Mac users, you'll use the command key, not the control key. While you are holding that key down, press the C key. Now, while we're talking about the keyboard, let me clear up once and for all the timing of when you hold a key down and when you let it up. This part is confusing for some people and can actually be stressful. So. Just relax and follow along. 
I'm going to show you how. I'm, I'm going to hold down control down with my pinky finger and I can uh, take my finger off anytime and nothing happens. No harm is done. I did not just launch intercontinental ballistic missiles. So relax. Control does nothing by itself. It only works in conjunction with another key. You can press it as many times as you want. Nothing happens. Okay, holding down control. Now I press C. Just a normal length key press is all you need. I release the key. I'm still holding down control. Now I release control. That's what I'd call a best practice for the order of pressing keys. Again, hold down control, then press and release C. Finally, release control. There is no doubt that I have issued a control C command. If you press C first, then control, that will not work. You'll just end up with the letter C on your document. So again, hold control, then press C, release C, release control. And you have successfully copied your text. This works every time. And there is a fourth way to copy depending on the program you are using. Current and recent versions of Microsoft Word no longer have an edit menu, but many other programs still do. For example, if I go to the Notepad program that's found in Windows, you see there's an edit menu near the top. I'll highlight text, click edit, and click copy. So what happened to the text that we copied? Where is it? Your computer has a special place in memory. It's called the clipboard. The clipboard temporarily stores whatever you copy on the clipboard. For all practical purposes, the capacity of the clipboard is limitless, so copy as much as you want. If you copy a few paragraphs of text to the clipboard, like here, it is stored there. If you copy a second piece of text or something else to the clipboard, such as a picture, so here's my picture, The first text is automatically removed and replaced with the picture. Whatever your program allows you to cut or paste, for example. If I copy some data from a spreadsheet, there's my spreadsheet, that would replace the picture. So the clipboard only holds one cut or copied thing at a time. How do we get something that is on the clipboard off the clipboard so we can use it elsewhere? That's where the paste command comes in. Back before computers made setting type so easy, typesetters, editors, graphic artists, and other people would physically cut passages of text and paste it onto a page. The name stuck and today we paste digital text we have copied. We also paste things other than text, but we'll get into that in part two of this tutorial. First, let's actually paste our copy text. Just like copying, we have four ways to paste text. First, move your cursor to the place in your document where you want to paste your copied text. Click on the paste icon at the top of the window. Second, we can right click and left click paste on the contextual menu. Note that some programs like Microsoft Word have different options for pasting. For now, just click the leftmost icon which says keep source formatting. Third, we press Control V on the keyboard, following the same sequence as with Control C. Hold Control down, press V, release V, and release Control. Note that if you hold V down too long, you will paste multiple copies of your text. So press and release V quickly. And our fourth method of pasting requires that we go back to Notepad, since the edit menu was removed from Microsoft Word. Just click Edit, then click Paste. Back in Microsoft Word, notice what happened. We now have three copies of the text we originally copied. That's because when you copy something to the clipboard, it normally remains there until you copy something else to the clipboard. The clipboard is not erased when you paste its contents. 
So you can paste as many copies as you desire from zero to infinity. In this case, we pasted it three times into Word. This is a great way to quickly add multiple copies of something into a document. Last but not least, let's use the cut command to remove text from our document. I'll highlight text. First, click the cut icon at the top of the window. Now I'll select another bit of text, right click, and choose cut from the pop-up menu. Third, I'll highlight more text then press Control X on the keyboard. The text is deleted. And finally, I'll switch to Notepad. I click Edit, then Cut, and the highlighted text is deleted. As with the Copy command, the Cut command places the highlighted and cut text onto the clipboard while simultaneously deleting it from its original location. So I can paste the last piece of text I cut and it will reappear where my cursor is located. Here comes what may be the scary part of this video. I'm going to suggest to you that for most people, the fastest way to cut, copy, and paste is to use your keyboard. If you can spend just a few minutes getting accustomed to the control commands, you'll soon be using them all day long, every day of the year. You'll have one hand on your mouse, one hand on the keyboard, cutting and pasting like a madman or woman, cutting and copying and pasting text and other things with reckless abandon. I want you to notice where the three keys used for cutting, copying, and pasting are located. Conveniently, all three keys are in a row on the lower left of your keyboard. They are close to the control key, so issuing any of these three commands is simple to do with just one hand. And remembering which keys does what is so simple you may wonder why you never knew this before. The cut command, control X, is like killing something. Think of any simple cartoon. If a character has X's for eyes, it is dead. It has been deleted. It has been cut out of living. The copy command, control C, is simple to remember because the word copy starts with the letter C. And the paste command, control V, is shaped as if something is pointing down. You paste something down on the page. The shape of the V reminds you what it does. Of all the keyboard commands I use, these three are the ones I used most all day long. Master these and you'll be a computer nerd in no time. So that's the basics of cutting, copying, and pasting. But moving text around with these commands is just the tip of the iceberg. You can cut, copy, and paste all kinds of things on your computer. We'll explore more advanced uses of cut, copy, and paste in part two of this special video from the Mom and Dad Technology Tutorial Series. Just click over here to play that video now. I'm Fred Kelly, your nerd sidekick, making you the technology hero. To get more helpful video like these, click the subscribe button down there. Thanks for watching.